as in the introduction of object oriented programming we have discussed about polymorphism here in this video we are going to start with one of the polymorphism that is called static polymorphism static polymorphism can be implemented by overloading here we are going to cover method overloading overloading simply means like when you are defining something which is already being defined as here in the method overloading as well we will create the multiple methods of same name inside a class having different set of parameters when i say different set of parameters that simply means like parameters may vary by the number of parameters or the data type of the parameters or the sequence of parameters but i am not at all bothered for the return types as it doesn't matter in the case of method overloadings in our previous videos we have also covered one concept called constructors which are the special kinds of method having the same name as that of the class and during the implementation of constructors also we have already done the overloading of them like here you can see test 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 are the different constructors inside the same test class and you see everywhere i have the different set of parameters so this is nothing but a constructor overloading so this kind of polymorphism we have already done and now in this video we will see about the method overloading so i'll continue with the same example for method overriding as well and uh, here as in the previous program we discussed like there are a couple of classes like person and employee and with the same properties and methods which we have defined now let's do one thing since we know like uh, every base type can accept the value of the derived type as in the object type we have seen it is a super type means all the types in the dotnet framework has been derived from it that's why he can accept any type of information similarly in this scenario i have a couple of classes like person and employee out of which person is a base class so of course i can store the value of employee type in the instance of person so let's see that syntactically so here i say person p1 is equal to new employee that simply means that p1 is of person type but at the run time i am going to assign it the value of employee type so when i will call the work method along with this you can see still it will call the work method of the person class that simply means that p1 is bound to the method work at the time of compilation only because at the compilation time this p1 will come to know that it is of person type and at the same time the work method got bound with this but at run time when i'm assigning the value of some other type i require to call the method of that type itself because at this particular time p1 is of employee type so whenever you want to bind the object with a particular method at a run time you can go for the method overriding like here you see in the base class method i say virtual keyword and here rather than new i will say override you can only override the virtual method or abstract method we will cover the abstract method later but for this scenario we have to mark this as virtual if i want to override this what does that mean it simply means if i take the example of real life like it's a person class it's a parent class and it is giving some suggestions to the child whether child can accept that suggestion or may define its own logic so here while i am working with this employee class you see i have overridden this work method that means i am not actually comfortable with this work method but i want my own now what will happen in this particular scenario when i have created the instance of person and i am assigning the value of employee type now it will matter at the run time like whether this p1 is having the value of person type or of employee type now whenever i'll make a method call so you can see it says it earns that simply means like here p1 is getting bound with the method at run time as soon as 
you will assign the value of employee type. Let's create one more class. As you can see, there is a person class, which is again derived from person class. And I override the work method again. Now, let's consider a scenario. Like here, while instantiating this, I say, first of all, this person is a student. At that time, he used to work. The same person later becomes an employee and still it works. But let's see what all he works. Like when he was student, it is it studies and when it is employee, it earns. So of course, we have the different classes, but the base type is getting bound with the derived type methods at runtime. And this is what we can do in method overriding as it is always a good idea to bind the value at the runtime so that we can get the exact functionality of a particular object at that specific time. Now, let's cover one more scenario of method overriding. As you may have seen like in operator overloading, I have defined a length class inside which I have done all these scenarios. Three operators has been overridden, greater than, less than and plus. Now, here what I did for printing the value of any particular length, I call this method called get length. Rather than doing that, I can do it in some other way as well. As we know, like in dot and framework, all the classes has been derived from the object class. And object class has a method called toString, which is virtual. So now, whether it is mentioned or not, this class is also getting derived from this object class. So what I can do here is rather than doing it like that, I can overwrite that to string method as you can see right here. And by default, what to string method does, it will convert the name of a class along with the namespace to a string. And if you will try to print len1 and len2 right here, it will simply print the name of the class. Let's see how it does. Like I printed len1. If I will execute this, you see the namespace name tutorials point underscore console app dot length. Now, if I will override that and I want to put it as per my style. All right. So if I'll execute it again, you see two feet, eight inches. Because whether I say two string or not, whenever I will print any object, it will internally call its two string method. So that is what we have done right here. I have defined this two string method as per my child class that is derived class length. So this is how you can work with this method overriding. Let's define something else like it manages a team. It's a manager. All right. You can see you can create as many as classes. There must be only one parent class of a particular class. Okay. Uh, make sure doesn't matter how many classes you are making. The concept of inheritance will remain same everywhere. So don't worry about the type of er inheritances which you ha may have heard like multi-level inheritance, multiple inheritance, hierarchical inheritance. If you are clear with the basic concepts of inheritance, everything is going to behave like same. All right. Now let's add some more to this. So like P1 is equal to new. Now it is manager. So now if I'll call work, what does it work? It manages a team, all right? So same object is calling different methods at runtime. Now, what I do is I'll create one more method like let's say branch manager, which is again derived from manager, all right? Because it will have all the manage all the features of a manager. So everywhere you will find the is a relationship like branch manager is a manager, manager is an employee, employee is a person. All right. Now, I don't want like when I have overridden the work method in the manager class, what I want is this method work should not be overridden further if any class is getting derived from this manager class. So what can I do? I can simply make it sealed so that in future, if you will derive any class with this manager, it will not be able to override this method further because doesn't matter 
which kind of manager he is, it will be managing a team. So at a particular extent, you may come across a situation like this. So you can also apply the sealed method. So now, if I will try to do it again, let's say I copy it here and paste it here. I'll remove this sealed keyword. All right. And you see, I'm getting an error. If I'll put the mouse, branch manager dot work cannot override manager dot work because it is sealed. So this is what I call the sealed method. So even if I will say him a branch manager, since branch manager does not have a definition for work, so as per the rule of inheritance, it will ask from the base class. And the base class of branch manager is manager where you will find this work method. So there will be no difference in the output. All right. So this is how you can continue with this method overriding.